Sabeed. She's not a good friend, but I did know Sabeed, and I knew her work, and I respected her. Uh, when she was a student at Kinnaird College, she was in touch with me. She needed to get a room in a hostel. We got to know each other over that time, and uh, <coughs> she finished at Kinnaird, then she went back. to Karachi to work with her mentor and friend Zaheer Ahmed Kitwai also known as Zag she is always doing inventive new thoughtful things path breaking things whether in information technology or in culture and then with the second floor mm-hmm. also known as T2F she provided a space for Pakistanis for in that war torn city of karachi to voice their concerns to exhibit their works to make music to discuss the things that other people wouldn't have them talk about on their spaces she was brave and fearless and my last image of her is with zack on the back of a police mobile waving the victory sign and i've seen in the years that i've lived in pakistan and worked there and continue to live and work there so many friends being silenced so many voices being snuffed out so many brave lives so many families ruined i wonder when it will stop but we have to carry on we have to carry on fighting i can't wait to go back five days later carry on doing whatever i've been doing and fighting the fight because i know that history is on our side i know that peace will triumph i know that rationality will triumph i know that i know that those who want a prosperous stable peaceful democratic pakistan will triumph this spirit will triumph that's what we have to live for that's what we have to hope for and we can't give up we can't give up for shahbaz bhatti for salman taseer for sabeen mahmood for parveen rehman for all those who laid down their lives just so that we can stand here we can express ourselves we can be ourselves thank you thank you very much thank you i'm a human rights defender myself i do represent quite a lot of defenseless we've spoken out for the christians we've spoken out for the ahmadiyya we've spoken out for the shias um we have been chairing side sessions at the united nations in the british parliament but one thing that i never touched was with the balochistan issue we just thought that dumps is a big institution they will be able to come out of it Temur had been asking us for help. He was struggling. He told us about the intimidation that they were facing. But although they call They call us fearless. I have been called a very brave woman. but we remain silent and i think it is our silence that cause i think my silence on staying quiet as an activist i promise not to remain silent anymore we were not silent because i feared being shot I'm already even in the UK 
we are threatened. I wasn't silent because I feared for my life. I was silent because there were not that many people speaking for the minorities I speak for. I did not want my voice to be silenced because I'm speaking for the people who are already a defenseless minority. But Sabine's death has woken me up to the fact that human rights for one is human rights for all. We are not that many in numbers. And the importance, the hate mongers are together and they are strategically united. It is time that the peace mongers come together, not on vigils, but we stand by each other, shoulder to shoulder, when we are alive. We must ask for an investigation, we must ask for the killers to be brought to justice now. Absolutely. We must ask for that. Absolutely. That must be our demand. Absolutely. We must raise it at every forum that we can. No, we will not remain silent to this. Um, today at the Islamabad Literature Festival, they were demanding certain those kinds of things. People were very, very angry and very mad. In touch with Sabine on and off. Um, she was a, a friend, but also, also, also used to encourage uh, me personally a lot as an activist and 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 and, and, and as a music nerd and IT geek. I used to connect with her. Um, I got an email from her six days ago, where, where which basically says, "Lovely to hear from you. We're going bonkers in Karachi, prepping for Del Pink." and dealing with all the programming etc for this month and then she she means it's great to hear that never forget it's ongoing and if possible we'll definitely join the next one in May Slack is awesome so I'm still the last line basically was leaving for London on the 5th so see you soon all the best brave woman very brave Sabine was quite close to our family. Um, she ran the second floor cafe where I attended frequently. Um, as a boy of 16, 17, I would go there because no one else cared about Shakespeare at school. And she gave me some books. And uh, she always welcomed me alone weird geeky kid coming to study Shakespeare on his own, gave me a copy of Hamlet to read. And lo and behold, several years later I find myself in England studying Shakespeare. <laughs> and I always remembered her. Um, she was very close to my sister, who organized a lot of music events with her two years ago. I performed with Love Love at one of her music festivals that she did at E2F. And a few years before that, I had bought a uh, shirt from Camden Town with a Clockwork Orange poster on it. And she was a huge fan of that film, of Stanley Kubrick's a Clockwork Orange. And when I went there, she saw me wearing it. And the first thing, she didn't recognize me at the time because I had longer hair and beard. And uh, she, she took out her phone and took a picture of me. She said, I've never seen anyone wearing a Clockwork Orange t-shirt. Because that film was banned in England, and it was sort of banned in Pakistan as well, but not to the extent that anyone cared about it. Um, but she always loved it, and she saw it as one of the highest works of art ever. And that, and that was one of the films that inspired me to become a filmmaker. Over here, she, she touched me. She inspired me. She always encouraged me. Uh, and yesterday, when my sister called and told me what happened. At phase two, it's near where my family does. We can't stay silent. No, uh, no. We are not going to shut up. No. This is going to be broadcast. I'm going to make sure this is broadcast as far and wide as I possibly can. Bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. With you, with you all the way. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mavish. I, 
not know Sabine, but she's a close friend to many in Pakistan. And I think everybody here can feel the collective grief of her passing. Um, I, I decided to speak because of Balochistan, which I have reported on uh, extensively. And, uh, and I think um, this is a, a huge and very difficult time for many. This is a death that is, uh, I think, more a product of the systematic and historic silencing of progressive voices and intellectual voices also in Baluchistan. The important question now is something like the first risk of hosting that talk because we don't collectively speak up about what's been ha happening in Baluchistan. students and professors and intellectuals there and I think especially here in London it is a safer space to speak about Balochistan and we hope that that can also be brought up. On a notice of less than 24 hours Sabine has brought everyone here you see um, as part of the movement called Never Forget I have witnessed um, demonstrations at the same place for last five months it has been the number has been going up and down but today I realized that one person has got so many people at less than 24 hours notice as somebody said um, sorry I don't know your name but as somebody said that history is on our side mm. please um, I've circulated the pen and paper around so that you can put your names and email addresses Please try to make an effort to attend the events that we are organizing. Um, it's, it's like, yes, we are fewer in number. We all know this. Come on, we know this. But we, we need to grow. We need to um, motivate other people and educate them. There are millions of people outside, not just in Pakistan, even outside Pakistan, who don't know what is the difference between a terrorist and a peace-loving person. So, out, out of ignorance. I'm sure we can make a difference, um, and I hope we will gather to, to remember the victims of Peshawar, we will remember the victims of Chicago, we will remember the victims of um, individual attacks like Sabine herself. I hope we will make an effort. Take out two hours in each month and let's get together, talk about it. That is our tool. We have, we have an ideology to fight with, we don't have weapons to fight with. And we will fight with that ideology, the ideology that brings people closer, not apart from each other. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. I was lucky enough to visit Karachi in January. Um, my best friend in England is originally from Karachi, and I'm a poet, and I got in touch with um, Mariam Farah from Spoken Stage. And she put on an event at T2F that I performed at. And um, I've been involved in lots of different activism in, in London and in Northern Ireland, where I'm from originally. And I've been to lots of different activist spaces. And T2F was um, such a, a beacon of hope and positivity and dynamism and to perform there was an absolute honor and to meet Sabine briefly was um, a wonderful experience because I think anybody who was lucky enough to meet her could instantly feel that energy that she had and um, And it was, and I just hope that T2F will continue because what we need is artistic, creative, peaceful spaces in order to bring about the world that we want to live in. And as I said, I'm from Northern Ireland and my parents were involved in the peace people and the peace marches throughout the conflict in Northern Ireland. And Nobody really reported on that or talked about what the activists did. They only talked about what the terrorists did. And they're such a small, small part 
of the population. Most people are good. And Sabine, I think, reminded us all that of the beauty of, of, of the goodness. And um, so I really, I just hope that T2F will continue and she will be an inspiration for everyone to keep fighting peacefully and to keep fighting with beauty and with art. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I do not know if anybody can do what she was doing. But we have promised and all of us have in solidarity promised to continue the legacy and that she will live through us. We are with you all the way. We are with you all the way. Sabine was the leader of peace niche. Peace cannot be a niche. Peace has to be for all. We can't let the world think that we are one niche group of people promoting peace. Absolutely. Everyone wants this. Everyone thinks they have their own answer, but we are, we've been the voiceless and we can't stay quiet anymore. If there's someone spreading hatred through any casual Pakistani language that we're just so adept at, we have to speak up, we have to change now, reform now. There's no other time. Sabine, the activist, was amazing. But one of the things that was particularly amazing about Sabine was how she could be such a committed activist and have so much else in her life. How she could understand that being a political activist doesn't mean that you stop loving Sting or Hugh Laurie. Um, it doesn't mean you stop enjoying concerts, it doesn't mean you stop enjoying astronomy, it means you don't stop loving your Mac. Um, and if you look at the range of things she did at T2F, the thing that made T2F such an amazing space was that it reflected a Renaissance woman in an age when there are very few of those left. There was almost nothing Sabine seemed to not be interested in that was interesting whether it was art, science, activism, music, theatre. Um, I saw her, well, I saw her in Karachi in February, but the last time I saw her properly when we sat down and had a long talk was, she was in London and she said, let's meet, you have to choose a place, it's your city. And I thought, oh God, the pressure of choosing some place that, that will be appropriate. So I chose the French house in Soho. Um, and I walked in and I said, this was important to artists and she said, please, I googled it. <laughs> and then she said, and it was a good choice. And then she told me more about it than I knew before she'd, she'd googled it for longer. Um, but the other thing that was amazing in, in Sabine was how she didn't judge those of us who did less than her. And everyone I know in the world did less than her. But she took people on their own merits. Um, and if you were the person she could talk to about Bruce Springsteen, that was a thing she would love to talk to you about. Um, and she wouldn't tell you off for not being interested in every other thing under the sun that she was interested in. Um, she was an extraordinary friend. Um, I remember in the middle of, I don't know what, she was getting death threats and I don't know what, I, I emailed her and I said, I have an iPhone question. This may be the wrong time to treat you as my geek squad. And she said, I'll be your, I'll be your geek squad for life. She also said, in 2013, and this is an important thing, when we met and she'd been getting death threats, and she said to me, I'm not sure that nonviolence is enough. Mm. Um, which was a horrifying thing to hear from her, but she said, you know, they're willing to kill, and what are we doing? And maybe it's, I'm beginning to think maybe it's not enough. And six weeks later, she sent me an email and she said, I have exited the Pool and Devi liberal militia phase. Um, and now I'm thinking sensibly and reasonably about other ways to fight. And I was looking at that email and that's, that was our Sabine.